So welcome, I'm Kelly with the Plant-Based Kitchen Asa. It's so nice to see you tonight. So tonight we're gonna actually be doing two stir fries, which is really fun. And it's actually gonna be fun because Jerry, who's behind the camera, is actually going to try to do two different ones. We'll get to put two different vegetables and two different sauces. Even though sauces are a little bit similar, it's still gonna be fun to eat. And then one of them has brown rice because I couldn't find wheat berries because of COVID and sometimes stores don't have everything. And then the other one has quinoa. So actually two kind of different flavors and tastes too, which is being really good, and really good for Denver, not Denver, dinner. And then what they'll happen too is we'll have enough to, because they make four servings each. So we'll have more than enough for Jerry and I to eat for lunch tomorrow, which is yay. All right, so let's get started. So I'm gonna make the sauces first and then I'm gonna do the vegetables. So I've got my wok that's ready to go. What's the rest? So, um, so I've got everything ready to go. So I've also made, I've also made the brown rice in my pressure cooker. And then I've made my quinoa and stuff and it's all ready to go. And I'll tell you a little bit about quinoa and how the best to make it for that. So the one, the one recipe I'm gonna start with first, the Szechuan stir fry. So a little bit spicy, but you could make it unspicy if you want. And then I've got a five spice stir fry. So that one's not gonna be spicy at all. It's gonna be more flavorful and, and that type of thing. So looking forward to trying both of those. So if I do the Szechuan, I'm gonna actually do um, the vegetable broth. So I've got the, the quarter cup of vegetable broth. You could always do water if you wanted to, too. So if you didn't have the vegetable broth, which is fine. Um, you get like, a, sometimes when you go in the pantry and you can't find things, just water is another way to do it. So I've got that. So then I've got the hoisin sauce. So that's one of the ones that, you know, make sure when you get it in the, um, and sorry, my oven was heating up. So I want to make sure the vegetables keep warm. Um, hoisin sauce, you can find those. Just make sure you find them without oil because I don't cook with any oil. I only saute with vegetable broth or stock, um, white wine, and then water. Those are the those are the three things. So I got hoisin sauce in here. I also mixed in the balsamic vinegar because I was running out of these little cute little dishes. So that's in there. So just put that in there. And of course, like if it sticks, then just you know grab a spoon. That looks like it's pretty good. And then so I got the balsamic vinegar. If you're following along, I have arrowroot, which is you know just like regular cornstarch. You can do either cornstarch non GMO or arrowroot powder. Um, some people have used like the tapioca flours and those, and the potato flours, you could do those too. It's just more of your thickening agent. If you even wanted to stay away from corn starches or arrowroot powder, you could probably do, um, I wouldn't say flaxseed, but probably like maybe chia seeds, but let them soak for a while so that they actually get kind of real gummy and it'll help you with um, making sure everything stays together. So I'm just gonna do a little stir. So I'm gonna get the, the uh, arrowroot powder just mixed in. And the nice thing about it is when you don't, when you're adding like arrowroot or cornstarch to something that's cold, it actually just mixes up really well. You wanna make sure you uh, temper it. If it's hot, you wanna add a little bit of the hot liquid to the cornstarch or the arrowroot and then mix it up and then add it back into your, into your dishes. Otherwise, you end up with that clumpy, lumpy stuff, which no good. All right, so we got a little bit of uh, pure cane sugar. So you could actually, if you want to substitute it, you could use maple syrup, you could use um, date paste, didn't have any date paste this time, so a little bit of the pure cane. And the nice thing about making the sauce ahead of time, it's gonna allow me to have that pure cane sugar and stuff dissolve. And I actually, instead of adding the, um, the one teaspoon, I actually only went with like a half a teaspoon, so I only added a little bit less, or quite a bit less. All right, so then I've got garlic sauce, and then reduced soy, so, um, sodium soy sauce. So garlic sauce is, Usually the one I use, there's two different, there's another one, there's like a sweet chili sauce, which you can get in the Asian aisle. And then I do, I did this one, which is the sambal leek. And this one's really good because it's actually a little spicy. So I wanted, you know, since we're doing the session one and we're doing a little spicy, I added the sambal leek. This is another one. It's like a dollar $2.99 in the Asian aisle. Usually at the very top shelves is what I've always seen. And it's really good. It's got a nice kind of like a sweet kind of a um, spicy flavor, which is really good. I like it for everything. Just added it. Okay, so that's going to go in there. Grab your spoon, get that out of there. If you didn't want any spicy, you could actually use just the regular sweet chili sauce. That's another one that uh, doesn't have the spice, but it has a really, really good flavor. So mix that up in there and then pour a cup of water. So add that in there because you want to make sure you've got enough to spread around all of the veggies. So just give it a kind of quick stir. Smell wise, it smells delicious. The sambal leek and the spiciness. So it's just got kind of a nice, it's almost like a coffee with a non-dairy milk in it. That's kind of what it looks like right now. So that'll be a really good um, flavor. And once it gets and hits the heat, it's gonna start thickening up. So right now it looks like it's really runny. And there's a reason for that. 
All right, so please the side. The second one, which we're going to do, which is the five spice stir fry. So we've got the reduced sodium soy sauce. Goes in there, so you can see a little bit of theme with the soy sauce, or the you could do tamari, coconut aminos, any flavors that you want. A little bit of the pure cane sugar. Sure, it comes out. Just give it a quick little stir so it can start dissolving. Same thing, date paste, agave, maple syrup, anything like you could use some of those, um, like monk fruit sweeteners and those, you could use those too. Then I've got the air root powder because the same thing, you're gonna want it thicken it up. So mix that in there. Kind of give it a quick little stir, a little whisk like this are really good. If you don't have a whisk, of course, just, you know, a, a fork or anything like that works just as well. But this is really nice to get all those lumps and bumps out. Then this one's a little bit different. So I've got lime juice, teaspoon of lime juice. It's going to have a little bit of the acid tartness, which is really good. Then the ginger. I'll grab ginger out. I keep ginger in the freezer. And so one of the things about having ginger is I can, you know, buy these big chunks of ginger here. And the good thing about it is when you, you know, a lot of times and stuff, when you would go into your refrigerator and you would grab out the ginger and you forgot about it, it would be like a nice big, what, like three, four dollar hunk like this would be this little tiny kind of like dried up piece of ginger. So if you keep it in the freezer, you just take it out of the freezer when you're ready, get your microplane or your grater. And then when you're, when you're ready, I'll pull this out real quick. You just take the, the um, ginger just like this, and then you just start running it on the microplane. So you'll notice that I'm not even, I'm not taking the skin off or anything. Um, the reason why is you don't need to. So when you start grating it up, it just grates up together. And it's really nice because like when I, like right now, if you could have like, they always put Emily used to say smell vision And it's, I think that's the, like the some coming thing in the TVs. It's when you're doing this, you smell all this fresh ginger coming out. So you can kind of add as much or as little as you want. But this is a way to keep your ginger fresh. And then it just grates up really, really well when you're putting in the dishes. So you can have ginger at all times all around. There. All done. So then when I'm done, take the piece back, throw it back in the bag in the freezer, and put it back in the freezer. It's all ready to go. So you never have to worry about not having fresh ginger, which is wonderful, or spending the time to have to worry about peeling it and doing all those kind of things. Just grate it up. All right. And then I've got the Chinese five spice. This is one of those ones that I think a lot of times and stuff that everybody buys, you know, because everybody's like, oh, you know, this is really good and it makes good um, stir fries, but then it ends up sitting in your pantry for a long time. So uh, Chinese uh, spice spice and stuff has, you can smell, it has like nutmeg and all kinds of different flavors. So I'm gonna add that in now and just give it a good whisk. Mix it up. This is a, definitely a lot darker than the other one, but because of the Chinese spice spice and some of the other things, but all good. It's got a really nice kind of, um, almost like a cinnamon nutmeg, a little bit of flavor. So a little bit different flavor that we're gonna have on the Chinese spice spice stir fry. And that's gonna go really good on the cauliflower and shallots and all kinds of the different things that we're gonna put together. So that one, as you can see, a little bit darker. I'll grab the other one. A little bit darker, a little bit thicker sauce. And if you could add, if you wanted to in the Szechuan, if you wanted to add a little bit of fresh ginger, you could do that too. So I'm just gonna set that to the side. Oh, and the one thing too is water. I forgot to add that in, that's the last ingredient. That's ready to go. Okay, I'll get these off to the side. So get the dirty dishes over on the side. And let's start walking. Jerry's behind the camera and he's like. <laughs> All right. Medium high, so we're going to start it. All right, so if you follow along, so we're going to cook the eggplant. So we've got little cubes of eggplant, which is really nice. I would say a lot of people, when they were doing, we just did a um, an Iron Chef event with Chef AJ. A lot of people said that the whole were not under the secret ingredients was eggplant. I would say that I was probably one of those, but we've eaten a lot of eggplant lately. We've done, you know, all kinds of dishes. We've put it into spaghetti sauces. And then we just did an eggplant, so an eggplant BLT, which was absolutely wonderful. Because the sandwiches, by the time we were done, were about that thick. And it's one of, I think it's probably one of Jerry's favorites now. So, all right, so there goes the eggplant, two cups.
It smells good already. All right. And then follow along. Then we've got the eggplants. we got leeks. So leeks are, are always fun to use and stuff. They're just a really kind of like a mild version of, a, of an onion. When you're using leeks, make sure you wash them really, really well. And one thing that what I do is when I slice up the leeks and it leaks into little pieces, I always put them in like a bowl of water and then just sift them through the water because a lot of times the stuff you'll find like in the leaves and the kind of the nooks and crannies of the leaf, you'll find lots of dirt. So just make sure you wash them really, really well. So I'm going to add those in. Check them all out. And all I did was just do, you know, thin little slices and then I cut the slices in half. That way everything kind of falls apart. You get the nice flavors of the links, but you don't get those big chunks, which is really nice. So they just all fall apart, which is great. Then we're going to do jalapeno because it's Szechuan. So I actually just went way down on the jalapeno. Um, so you could put one jalapeno in it if you want it really hot. But the jalapenos right now are really, really hot. And so I went down, so probably about a teaspoon worth of jalapeno. Just enough to give it flavor, but not enough to burn us out of the house. out all right and then we've got the garlic so we've got two teaspoons of garlic so i'm gonna put that in there everything wants to stick in these little dishes tonight so we'll just scrape that out all right make sure you got everything in there yes so if it starts to stick because i didn't put anything in here so you'll notice that sometimes the eggplant even though it has quite a bit of water will start to stick just grab a little vegetable broth or a little bit of water and just add a little bit. Don't add a lot. Um, the reason why is because otherwise then you have, you're going to add the sauce and then it's just going to be runny, which is not good. Let me show you what it looks like. So it looks like so far. Looks yummy. And that's not even all the vegetables and everything. We're actually going to add a bro broccoli rob and a couple of, and then and some tomatoes, which is very different for a stir fry, but it's going to be very good. And if you got the leek in there and it's like there's little chunks, just, you know, put your spoon on it and then just kind of move them around. And that way everything kind of just comes apart and you just have the nice leeks floating around. Let's sit there for a minute. One thing I did do on the eggplant, um, just because a lot of times when you're trying to chew, depending on when you get an eggplant or what time of year, a lot of times the, uh, the, the actual peeling on the, the eggplant stuff can be very tough. And so when you try to bite into it, it seems like you're like almost ripping it with your teeth. So one of the things that I always do when I have an eggplant, and even when I did a sandwich, is I take the eggplant, I cut the, you know, the top and the bottom off, and then I actually do a peeling. So I do like every inch, I do, I peel off the actual peeling. And then that way and stuff, you get a little bit of the peeling, some of the pretty color in there, but you don't get the toughness, which is really nice. Especially if I'm doing like it, this in a spaghetti sauce with a lot of other vegetables, I peel it every inch, but every other inch and stuff, just so that you have the, the ingredients and stuff that don't, it's not like it's a chewy mess. All right. So that's looking good. So you're, you'll notice that your eggplant cooks up pretty fast when you've got it into little chunks. So it's already starting to turn a nice little brown. It's really good. And it smells really good with all the garlic and everything. And then I got the sauces here going. All right, so the next step is add the broccoli rob. So the broccoli rob is, I cut it into like little two inch chunks, just kind of then it meets, it kind of meets the mouth feel and everything that you're looking for in this. So I'm gonna add that in. So lots of greens, Jerry's favorite, lots, lots of greens on anything. So if you can't find like, you know, because of COVID there's things in stores that you can find and there's things you can't find. If you can't find broccoli rob, you could always just do broccoli, just regular broccoli and use more of the, um, the florets and just cut them really small. So there's many different things that you could put in place of this, or you could put in spinach, kale, add your greens, all kinds of different things. And it's pretty already. It's not even really cooked all the way, but look at the colors. Isn't that beautiful? Looks good, just like that. It's like almost sit down with a, maybe put a little bit of rice in the middle of it and just eat with a fork. All right, it's got the broccoli raw in. So I'm gonna let that set for just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add the tomatoes. Like I said, stir fries are, usually don't see tomatoes in them, but it's gonna give it a really nice fragrance, especially with the, um, a, nice, a nice texture and things, especially when we're gonna add the, um, 
the sauce into it too, which is gonna be great. But speaking of sauce, let me just give it, remember you got that little bit of that cane sugar in it, so you only give it a stir so you don't have all that steeping at the bottom. It's kind of like when you're eating a bowl of cereal and all the sugar and everything hits the bottom. Just stir them both up, make sure it's all done. Got a big piece of broccoli rob, so kind of separate a little bit. If it does start to stick again, just grab a little bit of your vegetable broth or a little bit of water. We have somebody that wants to be part of the party. Shh. That's what you get when you're working at home or you're doing classes at the home. You always have the, the dogs that want to be part of it. I'm just making sure that the broccoli rob has a little bit of chance and stuff to cook before I add the tomatoes in, so I don't break the tomatoes down as much. Just kind of give it a little bit of a taste. Doesn't take very long. That's really good. And the one thing with stir fries, you know, especially when you go to a, you go to the, uh, the Asian restaurants and stuff, they, they when they cook things, they cook at a really, really high heat so that it's just, you know, it mixes up really quick. And then when you get the vegetables, it's not like at home where you, you've soaked them in a pan and you're sauteing them. They're really crisp and fresh. And that's the best way to have stir fries. Okay, so we got that. So I'm gonna add the tomatoes, the regular just cherry tomatoes. Jerry went to the store for me, thank you very much. And he bought organic, so nice little organic tomatoes. If you have them in your garden, great. Let's do a nice little stir, kind of a, almost a flip stir. And the last thing I'm gonna add, Water chestnuts right out of the can. And if you don't want them this big, you know, you can definitely do like a rough chop with your um, your knife and add smaller pieces, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add in. So that was one can. So let me separate the water chestnuts out and I'll show you the, the colors. Isn't that beautiful? Looks yummy. All right, so that's cooking for just a couple of minutes. It's more where you don't want the tomatoes to get all mushy, kind of like you do in like tomato sauce and stuff. You just want to get it where it's enough where they're warm through. And then I'm going to put it in the oven. I'll put the sauce on it and I'll put it in the oven. And that way I can keep it warm while I'm doing the next one because I want to be able to do two stir fries for you. It's nice, you just, you know, if you got a wok or you just got, you know, you could use just a regular skillet if you wanted to, if you don't have a wok, but it's nice and stuff with the wok. It keeps it, keeps things moving around and fresh. And you just kind of give quick stirs and it cooks it really fast. All right. Okay, so we have everything there. So a little bit for the session one, of course, is fresh red pepper. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. So just kind of a pinch. Just enough to give it some flavor, but not enough to burn you out of the house. And then, I'm gonna have the sauce. Just do a little stir here. And then we're gonna stir it up a little bit and give it time to thicken. That smells really good. It's got the, the sambal leek. It's got a little spiciness. It's yum. Let that, let that thicken for a little bit. Get everything cleaned up here. Nice about it too. Quick, fast, easy dinners. Stir fry. Especially if you have everything chopped up and ready to go. Or if you go to the store and you buy everything that's already chopped up. Great way to add great way to add uh, really good healthy ingredients and stuff into your diet. I'll let that set for a little bit, kind of get boiling. And then you're gonna see that the, the cornstarch, the cornstarch or the arrowroot powder and stuff actually starts thickening up because it's heating up. Just wanna let it bubble just a little bit. Doesn't take long. I mean, right now you saw the liquid and I'll show you here just a second. Let me just get it to stir it up here and make sure everything is covered. And do a little taste. I 
Hush button. A little spicy, but not enough that it's, that you're like, ooh, can't do that. Okay. So there we go. Sauces, as you can see where the sauce is all thickened up very nice and it's all covering the vegetables. So it is ready to go. Let me grab a pretty white bowl. All the goodies out. Okay, let me stick this in the faucet really quick. I want to rinse it out if I can get the other one started. I'm going to mix it up so you can see. Sometimes the tomatoes fall to the bottom so I can show it to you. Put this over here. have a little bit of I did a little bit of chives. I chopped those up for the next one. So I'm just gonna add a little bit here. Just for pretty. And you'll notice the stuff that I didn't add the rice. If you're doing this at home, you could definitely add the rice or the, the wheat berries and stuff right on the bottom. I'm actually gonna make them in little side dishes so Jerry can have some quinoa or he can have some brown rice, whatever he wants. And then he has the two vegetable dishes. So there's the Szechuan stir fry. Doesn't that look beautiful? Truthfully, didn't even need, don't even need the rice. You can just grab a spoon and away you go. So I'm gonna put this in the oven just to keep it warm. And then I grab the, the wok. Don't need to dry it too much because I'm going to start, once I start cooking, it's actually going to start heating up really quick. All right, so five spice. So we've got everything made with the sauce. So the sauce, just taste it really quick because the other one's a little spicy. This one, okay, so I would do, so the really fun thing was the Szechuan has a little bit of spice because it has that sambal leek. So you got a little bit of those, um, uh, what was the, the peppers kind of in that type of thing. The chili peppers. This one is more sweet. So you're going to get, so if you make both of these together and have them for like lunches or even for dinner, or you're having a party or something, this is really, this one's really sweet. So the five spice is definitely a sweet one, but it also has got a nice warming type flavor in it. That's really good. All right. So we've got the sauce made, we've got everything else. So we're going to add, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the cauliflower. So same thing, I'll add a little bit of extra broth just to start. So I've got cauliflower. So this is one whole cauliflower, but I actually just kind of, I chopped it up and, or just kind of broke it up into little pieces because you want enough where, you know, everything covers, like the sauce covers it, but it's not so big that you're eating like these big chunks of cauliflower. So that's all ready to go. Okay. All right, so we've got the cauliflower in here. I've got the shallots. So shallots, just a really mild onion. Um, they're usually like you'll see them next to the garlic. I most of the time I always say that they're very mild onion, but for some reason this year, and I don't know if it's because of COVID and the way that things are growing and packaged and all that, these tend to be enough to be able to make you cry. So, but they're still good. So shallots, I add that in. Nice purple color. All right, and then we're just making sure we're following along, so I don't skip things. We get garlic. Put the garlic in. All right, we're gonna let that saute for a few minutes. Grab another wooden spoon. And the nice thing about these dishes too, it's like two completely separate dishes, two completely separate flavors. But think about this big mound of brown rice on your plate or like quinoa or separating the two. And then you've got all these delicious vegetables, you know, like two different, almost two different flavors that you could put together. Yum. And leftovers.
just kind of want to let that suck because I've got it pretty well covered with the vegetable broth and everything. So I'm just going to let it saute a little bit. That. Let's give this a quick stir again. You know, if you do like ginger, add ginger to everything. I mean, you can definitely add the ginger to, you know, the first recipe we made with the Szechuan um, or with this one. And so I like the flavor of ginger, especially when you're doing stuff that's stir fried. It just gives that that really nice freshness, what I really, which I really like. So same thing when you're when you're actually doing the wok. Make sure you don't make sure you don't overcook the the vegetables because there's nothing worse than you know getting in there and you've got mushy broccoli and mushy cauliflower. So you're wanting to get to get them where they're al dente to a little bit past al dente, but not mush. That way you got that nice crispness, crispness, almost like when you're at a restaurant. Now this wok I got at Sur La Tab, which is a kitchen store. Um, you can tell it's well loved. You can probably see it on the camera. So when I was taking it into my my cooking classes and having we were doing some like stir fry type um, recipes in the cooking classes, there was a gas. It was gas stoves. And you can see that my handle, you know, it was almost brand new and stuff. My handle got, almost got burned off here. So if you see a little burn, it was because of my cooking classes, not my cooking. You can see it's looking really good. Cooking up. And the fun thing about doing, you know, when you're doing stir fries too, you get to taste as you go along. So like here you can see, all right, well, is my broccoli done? Do I think it's done instead of sticking a fork in it or a knife or something? You can actually just take a piece of it and try it. And you can tell at the very beginning, I just added a little bit of special broth. So far, nothing's sticking. All right, we'll find a little piece. A little bit more. Set for a couple of minutes. All right, so we'll get the other vegetables lined up as they go for Fong Long. So we've got bok choy, so baby bok choy, one of Jerry's favorites. All I did was take the bok choy, another vegetable that can be very, very dirty because it gets caught in all the different leaves and stalks and everything. So you want to wash it up really well. And then the, the thing you want to do too is when you're chopping it, I always chop off the end and then I just chop all the way up, including, you can see, I've got all the green leaves and everything, some more greens. And then you got nice big chunk pieces, which is really good. Okay, bok choy, we got sugar snap peas. So of course you usually see sugar snap peas, you know, they're about this long and about this wide. I have a tendency, I like, to, I like sugar snap peas, I love them actually. But one of the things that I wanted to match was kind of the same like bites when you're taking things. So I actually just did um, like nice little slices. So I would take like a, a sugar snap pea like this and just lay it on the ground on the on the cutting board. And I would just do nice little slices. So, you know, you get some of the things with the peas in it. But when you're eating it, it has these nice little slices. So you're not like chewing through a whole bunch of sugar snap peas. Anytime I do them like in a salad or um, different things like that or, or soups, I will actually slice them up really thin. Okay, a little bit of vegetable broth, so just now getting where it's sticking a little bit. We taste the broccoli, see if we're right at where we need to be. We are. Okay, so we have bok choy. Put that in. Sugar snap peas. Lots of greens in this one. That Jerry's favorite. And then we've got yellow bell pepper. So you could do red bell pepper, orange, whatever you want, or you could actually do the sweet mini peppers and you could do all the colors. So it's just nice when you've got the yellow instead of like a green bell pepper. It just adds that pretty color, which is what you like when you do stir fries. Stir it up and then I'll show you. One second. There it is so far. Very different looking than the other one because the other one had the greens and had the reds and everything. So you definitely could add, you know, the sweet mini peppers, which are yellow and orange and, and um, red, which would be really pretty. This is going to be really good. 
bell peppers and having more of kind of a sweet, kind of a sweet teriyaki type of sauce or sauce that we have here, the five spice sauce is really good. Make sure we get everything in there. Yep, we did. Let that cook. And the bell peppers, I'll just show you, I just did thin little slices so that they cook up really, really fast, which is nice. So the cool thing about it, you do this, you've got, you know, you've got the slice of the sugar snap peas and you get the slice of the, the bell peppers. So you've got a lot of evenness, which is really nice when you're eating things. Let that cook a little bit. Let's see if the moisture, I'll just add a little bit of vegetable broth. Sometimes you'll get a bell pepper that doesn't separate, just separate it out. Let that set a little bit, everything going. So then on my dishes, I'll keep this off to the side because that's my that's my chives to add to the top. Sauce. So I'm going to put brown rice in one bowl, one bowl, and I'm going to put the um, quinoa in the next bowl. So quinoa. So what I did when I cook quinoa, so you know you measure out exactly what you need for the water, just follow the package instructions. And then what I did is I, so when you do quinoa, you've got the water in there and you set it on boil. So you let it boil for about two to three minutes. And so it's kind of like a, a roaring boil and then turn off the stove and then the burners and stuff, and then just put the lid on it. And what ends up happening is when you do that with quinoa, it actually will actually just take it and it makes it the best quinoa. So you're not like boiling it. And you'll find that if you boil it all the time, a lot of times it's something to happen is like, the, like everything, like the quinoa and the seed, they, they kind of just like, they kind of just like start split the grains and stuff and it's just they're not as good so here is the quinoa so it's just been soaking just sitting on the stove and look at it nice fluffy beautiful quinoa so boil it for two three minutes turn off your turn off your burner put the lid on it and just let it set so if you're getting ready for dinner you know just make sure you have enough time to let it set and then you've got this beautiful fluffy quinoa okay so i'm gonna put that here And think about it so that the kind of the measurements too. So if it says a cup, like if you're doing a recipe and it says a cup of, cu of uh, cooked quinoa, you do a half a cup of dry, and then you add your moisture to what it says it needs to be. And that could be a vegetable broth, water, whatever you want it to be. And then that's when you cook it and you'll end up with a cup. So if I did a cup of quinoa to get a cup of cooked, I'm actually gonna get almost two cups of cooked. So it's always that kind of like take your, whatever it says to cook, do it in half, and that's gonna come up with the right measurements for you. All right, so I've got quinoa, and then in my pressure cooker, and it's been keeping warm, not too hot, just bring it out over here. Same thing, beautiful brown rice, all cooked up and fluffy and ready to go. So I'm just going to add that here into my bowl. Like I said, this is almost going to be like a like a, a, a buffet or something. So Jerry's going to be able to add, you know, if he wants some quinoa in there, he wants the brown rice, whatever he wants, the vegetables. It's all going to be by choice, which is really nice. Put this back in to keep warm. Jerry eats a lot of brown rice, so that's why I put it back in there warm because I know it's going to go quick. He could eat this whole, probably this bowl just by himself with vegetables. Cook stir. So I'm going to put this in the oven real quick too. I just want to keep everything nice and warm for dinner. And I know, go ahead and say it. He's lucky. Everybody says that all the time. Must be nice to be Jerry because he gets all these dinners cooked. And he agrees. Probably heard him behind on the, the camera. Just mm-hmm. Trying one of the sugar snap peas. Just a little bit longer. Oh, those are good. 
Nothing better than really thinly sliced sugar, sugar snap peas when they're cooked. Let's try bell pepper. And last thing I'm gonna try just to make sure everything's cooked, bok choy. Done. Doesn't take long for those ingredients and stuff to cook. And they grab a bowl. All the good ingredients. I think about a waste. <clears throat> Make sure the bowl looks pretty. Give me your cup. Oh, I didn't do sauce. All right, grab, grab your, say it happens to everybody. Okay, grab a bath. Thank you. So I'll add this in really quick. I'll just do a quick wipe out of the bowl. <laughs> happens to the best of us. We get, we get distracted and away it goes. All right, so pick that up really quick. Add the sauce, just like we did last time. And truthfully, that had been good without the sauce. I was tasting the vegetables. They were yummy. Let's let that sit for a minute or two. So it kind of starts bubbling up. And this is really nice too. So what, you, what I'm using is a regular wok um, and then I'm using a, an induction burner. So these induction burners are really nice, especially, you know, if you think about it, I just made dinner and I, you know, I wouldn't even, if I, if I had everything ready really quick and just did the vegetables, I could have done it without even turning the stove on, which is, you know, in the summer and when, especially it's, you know, been in the 90 degrees here, kind of nice. And nice not to have to turn on the stoves and, and do all those things. So. Starting to bubble. That way when it starts to bubble and then you start stirring it, you're not breaking down your vegetables as much, but you're also letting your sauce get thick, which is really good. There we go. So it didn't take very long at all. That is, turn it off, just stir it all together. Let's try pepper. That is so good. Okay, here we go again. Take two. Nice thick sauce. And one of the things too, if you like the sauce, you know, and you're you're one that like I like I like sauce on things. If you like the sauce, make like double the sauce, and that way you have plenty of extra. So like even the next day after it's been in the fridge and you would like to have some extra sauce added to it, you've got it. Might as well make it all at once. Water in that, let it soak. Just going to add some of the cauliflower because it kind of sinks to the bottom a little bit. That way you can see the, the pretty. A little bit of chives. So there is the five spice stir fry. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so let me grab the other ones out of the oven. That we can see it all together. Let's do that that way. And then you get your rice. So here we go. Five spice stir fry. Absolutely beautiful. Tastes delicious. 
brown rice out of the pressure cooker, quinoa that I cooked on the stove, and then you've got your, this is a little warm, the Szechuan stir fry, which is a little bit more spicy, but all ready to go. So considering it's just Jerry and I, how delicious that you can, you know, you can't resist something like this. We can decide what kind of uh, grains and things like that that we want and the rices and mix the two together if we want, put a little bit of brown rice and quinoa on top, which is absolutely delicious. You could do colored quinoas if you want. And then we're going to add these two different, completely different dishes. So almost like on the plate, you've got a little spicy and you got a little sweet, which you couldn't ask for anything better. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in two weeks. Love you. Bye-bye.